The world's oceans were once home to 10 times as many whales before the Captain Ahabs of the world came around. Hunting hit big species the hardest, wiping out 99% of the southern hemisphere's blue whales, for example. And as the gentle giants disappeared, so did another lesser known element of the oceans, their poop. This is Scientific American's 60 Second Science. I'm Christopher Intagliata. Got a minute? I've described it as sort of like oversteeped uh, green tea, like well-steeped green tea. So it is very diffuse and a big plume. Joe Roman, a conservation biologist at the University of Vermont. Um, my daughter's friends say I'm a whale poop scientist. And he says he studies all kinds. When whales are feeding on krill, they're really high lipids, lots of fat. So it can be, it sort of clumps together and floats at the surface. So there's a, a great variety of, the, um, of fecal plumes out there in the oceans. Whale poop's important because it transports nutrients from the deep ocean up to the surface. Sperm whales feed on giant squid and other deep sea creatures, so they'll dive more than a kilometer down. Then they come to the surface to breathe and digest. And as it turns out, they poop and they also pee, so they're releasing these nutrients. Nutrients like phosphorus, which are slurped up by phytoplankton and algae. Which in turn is consumed by zooplankton, copepods, or krill, and those are either eaten by fish or they can be eaten by seabirds. Some fish swim up rivers and die. Birds sprinkle the land with their guano. And those deep sea nutrients slowly work their way into ecosystems on land with the help of bald eagles and bears and the like. Roman and his colleagues modeled how that conveyor belt of nutrients has slowed due to the huge declines in whale, seabird, and fish populations. And they reckon that only a quarter as much phosphorus makes it to surface waters today compared with the past and the flow of phosphorus to land has nearly stopped at just 4% of historic levels. The results are in the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Roman says this slowing of the nutrient conveyor belt is reversible, though. I mean, the most important part for me is, is trying to restore these species as ecological engineers on the planet and really try and share the planet with them. Let's not just keep them in zoos or even in small island pockets of protected areas but let them let them move around the uh, planet more freely. And when they do, he says, those key nutrients, too, will once again roam the Earth. Thanks for the minute. For Scientific American's 60 Second Science, I'm Christopher Intagliata.